Oh, you made this? Okay. I made this. Let's get this thing right. It's machine data. I hope you're doing really, really well. I hope you're having a great day. So the drama that's been kicking off with Streamlabs, that's what I'm going to be covering in this video. I'm going to be covering this video in three different parts because I want to make it sort of useful and actually add value to anyone that's watching this. But also there'll be a lot of people that are watching this that probably aren't aware of exactly what's happened with Streamlabs, both the history and also in the last 24 hours with Streamlabs. So the three parts I'm going to be covering in this video are going to be the Streamlabs drama, exactly what has actually happened, almost like a timeline of things that have happened and oh my god this is one of the worst pr disasters i've ever seen in the live streaming world probably the worst pr disaster i've ever seen honestly i'm struggling to think what would top this Streamlabs are giving twitch a very good run for their money with this one then part two i'm going to be going into the implications of it and the reasons for it and also is it predictable i think this was predictable and i'll explain exactly why because i've got some empirical evidence that almost proves that this was a predictable thing that would happen with Streamlabs. and then part three just some practical help for anyone that's looking to move over from Streamlabs. Streamlabs to something else, for example, OBS Studio, Own.pro, or whatever. If you're thinking of moving from Streamlabs OBS, hit the like button because I, I can't think of anything more inventive. So, yeah, give me some love. Okay, part one, Streamlabs, what's the drama all about? This started off as just like a basic meme, but I think there was an undertone of seriousness to it here. Lightstream, who are essentially a competitor to Streamlabs, stream labels and overlays and things like that, they tweeted out, hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it up a little bit so it's not obvious that you copied. And essentially what's happened here, I'll just get it a little bit bigger, that's what she said. Level up your PlayStation, Xbox and streams, level up your console streams. They've just changed a few silly little things here. Streamlabs have essentially ripped off the Lightstream web Website. And you can see everything from the layout to like the content, the titles, the descriptions, very, very similar. But there have been some very distinctive tweaks here just to make it look a little bit different. So even though this is clearly a meme, there's a seriousness to this, right? You can't just go around copying people's work, particularly when you've got the resources to be able to pay for someone to do a proper job on things. Particularly with things like this, not just the code base and stuff like that in the first place, but then the content off the back of it. Streamlabs are a company, they've got massive resources, okay? They're they're not selling physical products. They're not having to store products. Okay, they're employing support staff, but basically they're a highly profitable organization selling digital products. They can afford to do this right. Anyway, this started off as a little bit of a meme and it gained a bit of traction. At this point, it's got 1,300 quote tweets, 30,000 likes, which in the streaming world is pretty viral, I would say. Now, here's where it started to go a little bit downhill for Streamlabs, okay? Elgato commented saying, I know the feel. Control your live stream from your phone with Streamlabs Stream Deck. Streamlabs Stream Deck is a clear ripoff of the Elgato Stream Deck product. It just is. Now, okay, they might be doing it on the phone and there might be some innovations in there, but just think of a more innovative name. Just do something properly for once, right? But now we start to get a load of different companies and individuals basically coming out of the woodwork and explaining why Streamlabs is not a great company have allegedly ripped them off. This guy says that the cross-clipping functionality was ripped off from him. Brandon here comes in and says, actually, the reviews from Streamlabs that they they've put on that website were real reviews, but Streamlabs didn't even bother to change them in any way. They just renamed them. So they even used the reviews from Lightstream on this new website. Now the response from Streamlabs initially was, we made a mistake. Text on the landing page was a placeholder text that went into production by error. This was our fault. We removed the text as soon as we found out. Our intended version is now live. Lightstream team is great and we reached out to directly apologize. Now. I don't know about you, but I am absolutely 100% not buying that. If it was just placeholder text, they'd be using Lorian, Ypsilon text. They'd be using placeholder images and things like that. They've put placeholder text in there and they've made tweaks because they want it to be their content. And it's as simple as that. And this just set the tone really from Streamlabs because not only have they copied them in the first place, but they've given a really bad excuse for why they did it. And you've got to realize here, they're dealing with Zoomers. Most of the live streamers that are out there are aged between sort of 18 and 30 years old. They know what's going on. People can read between the lines. These aren't stupid people that you're dealing with here. Everyone's piling in at this point. It's memes. It's all kinds of stuff. Then things went from bad to like nuclear bad when OBS Project said this. Near the launch of Slobs, Streamlabs reached out to us using the OBS name. We kindly asked them not to. They did so anyway and followed up by filing a trademark. We've tried to sort this out in private and they have been uncooperative 
at every turn. Now, OBS have a lot of credibility in the streaming world. They've released their product, they've maintained that it's been free, and they've largely supported it to a very good degree, and a lot of developers have built plugins off the back of it. A lot of streamers hold OBS Studio in high regard. So when they tweet something like this, people listen to it, people believe it, and why shouldn't they believe it? OBS go on to say, we're often faced with confused users and even companies that don't understand the difference between the two apps. Support volunteers are sometimes met with angry users demanding refunds. Imagine demanding a refund from a company that are not even taking money from you. <laughs> Legally, they've obeyed the terms of the GPL, but they've repeatedly disregarded the spirit of open source and giving back. Now, I've already covered some of the stuff about Streamlabs and the way that they operate. I did a video all about how you can cancel Streamlabs, but in that video, I counted the number of times that we get sold to whilst you're trying to cancel and also the number of clicks that you have to do just to get to the point where you can even cancel it. Spoiler alert, it's absolutely horrendous, really bad salesmanship from Streamlabs, just very bad PR. But then when you see and read about some of the stories that other people have of Streamlabs allegedly ripping them off, you then start to understand why they are how they are. So from here, we have more people piling in. We had EposVox, glad somebody finally said it. By the way, OBS Studio do have a Patreon here, so I'll link that in the description below. Feel free to go and show OBS Studio some love by supporting them on their Patreon if you do use OBS Studio. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, well, it probably can't get much worse for Streamlabs, but it still continues to get worse, and it did get a lot worse for them. Pokimane is one of the people that's actually fronted for Streamlabs, and she's been a big advocate of Streamlabs for a long time now. They literally use her face on the website. Let me take a look, see if it's still there, actually. Yeah, as you can see, Pokimane's face is actually on the website, so she's essentially allowed her face to endorse this product. Pokimane came out and said, Streamlabs better resolve the entire thread of issues, or I'll be asking them to take my face off the platform, plus look to use other donation services. Now, this off the back of the Valkyrie skincare drama that we recently had, you can see here, Pokimane, absolutely business first. I am not taking any of this crap here. It's not worth the risk. If you can't sort these issues out, I am going to distance myself from you as quickly as possible. I quite respect that from Pokimane. Similar thing with Hassan. I will never use Streamlabs again if they don't immediately resolve this matter. So these are some big hitters in the streaming world that are basically coming out and supporting the narrative at the moment. Things went from bad to even worse than that here. We've got ex-employees now piling in and basically talking about some of the bad practices that they experienced while they were employees. During my time at Streamlabs, so many people in marketing were reprimanded on pit plans and or fired for speaking up against unethical business practices to the point where they basically got rid of the entire marketing team by 2018. Wow. I mean, for the amount of marketing they do as well, that is crazy. Superyan then goes on to say, you see things like this blow up today and wonder how did they do that? You'd think someone in the room would have been like, hey, this is a bad idea, right? Right. Streamlabs fires those people for not being team players. I did want to just point out these two things to underline the business practices that some of people are actually talking about here. This guy here, Ari Weintraub, he says, the worst one I remember was the auto sub from Streamlabs Plus or whatever, and you had no idea what you were subbing to someone. And then Jeff said, we told them this was happening. It was the number one support ticket request. We had complaints all the time as partner managers. We were told it wasn't going to be fixed because of how much money it made. I then made a joke because Nutty, who many of you will probably know who Nutty is, a brilliant content creator in the live streaming market, very, very funny, but he's made many jokes in his videos about how Streamlabs don't have very good practices. Now, I wanted to show Nutty's take on this because I think he just encapsulated this absolutely brilliantly here. I tweeted back in March that they released an update to their Stream Deck app solely to hide behind the Streamlabs Prime. They only reverted the change when I, when I called them out. In, in other words, they said that this was free, the Streamlabs Deck, and then you can see in the version history, the only change to the version was that the app now requires users to be Prime. That was literally the sole update of the whole whole thing. And he says here, there's a reason I roast the hell out of them. In every video, I've turned down sponsored videos because I refuse to support a company that's consistently pulling stuff like this. This is not a one-time mess up. It's a pattern of behavior. And that's the important thing here. The reason why there are so many people that are coming out and talking about this is because this is a pattern of behavior. So having seen some of the nutty stuff and some of the different dramas that have been happening today, I thought to myself, well, I kind of knew that this was probably going to happen at some point. Those of you that have been on the channel for a long time will know that I started off doing Streamlabs tutorial videos. I've got a lot of Streamlabs tutorial videos. It's not in my interest per se to roast Streamlabs because I stand to lose views if Streamlabs doesn't do so well. However, 
my morals and my credibility is far more important to me. And that is one of the reasons why I pretty much dubbed down the amount of stuff that I cover on Streamlabs a long, long time ago. And it was after the Council Streamlabs Prime video where I actually just saw that they were taking too much money. They didn't send me any notification that they'd taken $150, $200 from my account. Yet they didn't show me any notification that they'd taken the money from my account. And I didn't get an email. Yet they always send emails about other crap and they always give notifications about other crap. Why are they doing this? Streamlabs are clearly operating in a way that hides the fact that they are taking money from people. The tactics are underhand, they're questionable business practices, and I think people are starting to see through this. Now, I said I had some empirical evidence to show that this was predictable and that people probably already had a bad feeling towards Streamlabs. Now, I knew this in advance because a long time ago, I made a video which was exporting scenes from Streamlabs to OBS Studio. But around about the same time, like two months later, I did another video just to help people, which was exporting scenes from OBS to Streamlabs. But I specifically chose as an experiment to keep the thumbnails as similar as possible and also the titles as similar as possible and the descriptions as similar as possible. The length of the video is also quite similar as well. And I just wanted to, almost like as a sick experiment, just understand how many people were moving from one to the other. Now you probably want to see the results. Let's go on to the analytics. First, we'll look at the exporting scenes from OBS to Streamlabs OBS. And I've probably averaged on this video about 50 views per day. So on average, I'm sort of helping about 50 people a day move from OBS Studio to Streamlabs. And we'll look at the exact same data, but this time exporting scenes from Streamlabs OBS to OBS Studio. And I can see, and I've seen this for a long time now, 300 plus views per day. And that's been quite consistent. And as you can see in the last 24 hours, a huge spike of people that are looking to move away from Streamlabs. This is empirical evidence to show that more people are moving away from Streamlabs and moving into something like OBS Studio. Now, the thing is, Streamlabs still do very well because they heavily market their product, which brings me on to another point. If I do a search for OBS Studio, they've removed it. They've removed it. They've... They, I can't believe that. So I did this earlier and there was an advertisement for Streamlabs. Luckily, I got a screenshot of this, so I'll put the screenshot up on screen. Streamlabs were marketing against OBS Studio's name. You would see that their advertisement would come up above OBS Studio, which is just, again, just another pattern of behavior. It's just another bad business practice from Streamlabs OBS and just really questionable morals that are coming from their vibes, really. So I don't know. What do you guys think about this? I'm really keen to know exactly what you think. <laughs> I just think that when companies treat their customers badly and their suppliers and other players in the market, they are asking for trouble. I think that this was heavily predictable. I think that people have been looking for a reason to hate on Streamlabs and that this has been bubbling away under the surface a little bit for a long, long time. And really, it was only a matter of time before all this kind of stuff came out. There's so many people that are just telling bad experiences of Streamlabs that I think that Streamlabs could struggle to survive from this. The thing is, Streamlabs won't disappear overnight, but there is a reasonable chance that over a long time now, a long period of time this will heavily affect their reputation and it may mean that in the longevity of time they may either cease to exist or at very least be a much smaller player in the market i'm keen to know what you guys think of this let me know in the comments below let me know if you've got any horror stories particularly if you've had a product and had meetings with streamlabs and then they've brought out copied products now i did say that i would talk about some practical things that you can do if you're looking to move from streamlabs to obs studio or whatever and the first thing i'm going to say is i've got a lot of content about this just naturally on the channel first of all it's important to talk about the distinction between the software that you use to broadcast in and all of the other alerts, overlays, and things like that that Streamlabs provide. The software, there's lots of different options, and there's also different options for the overlays and things too. On the live streaming broadcasting software side of things, you can move over from Streamlabs to other platforms quite easily. I've obviously done a video about OBS Studio, which I'll link below, but there's other videos out there as well in case you're looking to move to other platforms too. For example, OBS.live, Twitch Studio, XSplit, and a number of other different platforms that are out there like own.pro and so on and so forth. Next up, if you've got a Streamlabs Prime account and you want to just evaluate whether or not this is something that you want to continue, whether it's good value for money, I've done a video about that. Personally, I don't think it's very good value for money, but I'll link that video as well. You can take a look for yourself and make your own decision. If you do decide to cancel that, I've got a video to show you exactly how you can cancel that. Don't miss out on that video because it's quite funny just to see how many clicks there are. Do like a counter, how many clicks there are and how many sales there are on that. It's just kind of a bit strange stressful, to be honest, trying to cancel the Streamlabs Prime account. And finally, I've just recently launched a video all about how to set up OBS Studio. It's a very detailed video. It's probably geared more towards newbies. So if you've got no streaming experience or very little ex experience, then you'll find that useful. But even more experienced people will probably find that useful. And in that, I even show how you can port over some of your things from Streamlabs to OBS Studio, including like alerts and browser sources and things like that. Hopefully you found this useful. Let me know if you did. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a wonderful day. Take care.